Uh, let's talk about carbon dioxide. Here's the molecule. Two bonds between a carbon atom and an oxygen atom on each side. So the carbon forms a total of four bonds, two sigma bonds, and two pi bonds. And for oxygen, we have two lone electron pairs on each oxygen atom. Now, for carbon to accomplish this, there's only one way. It has to be um, sp hybridized. And to understand why, let's look at the orbital block diagram for carbon. So carbon has two electrons in the 2s orbital and two electrons to contribute to the two p orbitals. This one is empty. The first thing that happens is one of these electrons from the s orbital gets promoted up to the p orbital. That takes energy but as a result of that happening, we can now form a chemical bond. And that then more than compensates for the energy that's required to do the electron promotion. Now here we have two sigma bonds and two pi bonds. So if these hybridize, one S bond and one 1s orbital and 1p orbital. We're combining two atomic orbitals. We get two equivalent molecular orbitals, sp orbitals. Each one has an electron. And then we have left over two unhybridized P electrons. And of course, the geometry here is that these sp orbitals are 180 degrees apart. So an sp orbital, an sp orbital that will form a sigma bond with the oxygen. And then two unhybridized p electrons here and here that can participate in forming the pi bonds with the oxygen. So carbon is sp hybridized. Now what about the oxygen atoms? What is their state of hybridization? So let's draw the orbital diagram for oxygen. Two S, two P, this is oxygen. What would happen, say, if this two S orbital and two of the P orbitals combined, so we're taking an S orbital and two P orbitals. It's an SP2 hybridization. We're combining together one, two, three atomic orbitals. What emerges is three equivalent molecular orbitals, equivalent because they have the same energy level. And then there's one unhybridized p orbital left over with its single electron. These are sp2 orbitals. This one has an electron pair. This one has an electron pair. And 
we have a single electron. So oxygen can use an sp2 orbital to form a sigma bond. So we have the sp2 orbital of the oxygen atom overlapping with the sp orbital of the carbon atom to form the sigma bond. It has an unhybridized p orbital, so it has a p electron to share with carbon with one of carbon's leftover p electrons to form the pi bond, and the same thing happens with this oxygen atom. So these unshared electrons that we see, these would be sp2 electrons. And same thing over here. And then we have accounted then for the structure of carbon dioxide. It's a complete octet, and oxygen, each oxygen atom has an unshared pair of electrons. Um, perfectly valid, but that's not what happens. Uh, carbon is sp hybridized. But let's take another look now at oxygen. Again, the orbital diagram. For oxygen. Of course, this is the 2s, this is the 2p orbitals. Instead of having an sp2 hybridization, what would happen with oxygen if instead we had sp hybridization? Take the 2s orbital and combine it, say, with this p orbital that has a single electron in it. Again, we're going to generate two equivalent sp molecular orbitals. And we have left over two unhybridized p orbitals. One has a single electron. Whoops, let's get this in better focus. We combine these together to form two equivalent molecular sp orbitals. And we have left over two unhybridized p orbitals, one with a single electron and one with an electron pair, like this. And then here, electron pair, and here a single electron. So these are the sp orbitals that form from the hybridization. These are the leftover unhybridized p orbitals. Notice this is available to form a sigma bond. This is available to form a pi bond. Oxygen forms the sigma bond. It has a p electron to form the pi bond. Same thing for this. So we see oxygen, we can account for this structure by having oxygen sp2 hybridized, or it can be sp hybridized. The difference is this. Still, we have two lone electron pairs for each oxygen. just like we did up here when oxygen was sp2 hybridized. The difference is one of these lone electron pairs is an sp. The other lone electron pair is a p orbital, or pi electrons. Same thing for this oxygen. This would be sp. These unshared pair of electrons and pi electron unshared.
So when oxygen is sp hybridized instead of sp2 hybridized, then again it's the same Lewis structure, but the unshared lone electron pairs in oxygen are sp and pi. Here they were both sp2. This is actually more advantageous because here we have this carbon of course has p orbitals to form these pi bonds. This oxygen has p orbitals with an unshared pair of electrons and same for this one. So when we have this hybridization now we're setting ourselves up where we can have the p orbital electron delocalization as we've described in the several past videos now. So let's write this up at the top of the page realizing these are sp electrons and up here we have the pi electrons as we're showing it here in our Lewis structure. So we go back to the top Erase this. Oxygen is also sp hybridized. So sp electrons, these up here are pi electrons. They're in a p orbital, and that p orbital has a lone electron pair in each case. Now, Let's draw the different types of Lewis structures that can result from this when we can shuffle these p orbital electrons about as you saw us do in the previous videos. So we have I'm just going to put the dots in now for the pi electrons. Now what can happen is we could imagine this kind of case. Let's say that here, here we're sharing, we're sharing an electron pair. What would happen if, and here we're sharing, we're sharing an electron pair of pi electrons. Suppose this oxygen atom ends up keeping both pi electrons they go to this oxygen atom. So we're no, we are no longer going to have a pi bond then. It's going to be like this. Just the sigma bond remains. And the oxygen now has two lone pair of pi electrons and it will have a negative charge because it literally swiped the pi electron from this carbon atom, leaving this with a positive charge. But if that happens, then what we could imagine is here this has a lone electron pair in its p orbital. This one doesn't this one is now missing a pi electron. So we could imagine this going like this so that these pi electrons are going to be shared now between the oxygen and the carbon, that will give us a triple bond. And this originally had a lone electron pair. It's now sharing them with carbon, so this has a positive charge. So we have this type of Lewis structure. This had a positive charge when this electron, when this oxygen took the electron from it, but this one here is donating another electron to it, so that doesn't have any positive charge. So that's one thing that could happen. Now, suppose that instead of this oxygen taking the electron away from the carbon, suppose this oxygen took the electron away from the carbon. They're sharing pi electrons here.
if this oxygen take keeps the pi electron from the carbon, it will now have two lone pair of p orbital electrons. And since it swiped the electron from the carbon, it has a negative charge and only a single bond. But then this oxygen can donate its p orbital electron pair to form the triple bond, leaving this with a positive charge. So we can have these Lewis structures, and notice that these are symmetrical. Now, here we have separation of charges, a positive charge and a negative charge. That's not an ideal situation, but it is permissible. The fact that we have symmetry, that does gain us extra stability. So here we can imagine these different Lewis structures now with a carbon dioxide molecule because the oxygen is sp hybridized having these lone pair of pi electrons and as you saw us do in the previous videos this has p orbital electrons so does this and so does the carbon it just happens to be sharing them in a pi bond right now but when you have that situation, then you can have the electron delocalization and you can shuffle these pi electrons about, as you saw us do here in these different Lewis structures. And this might seem unusual. I mean, here we have the molecule. All atoms have an octet. Why can't it exist just like this? Well, in fact, these structures, these different canonical forms, remember, the more canonical forms you can draw, the more stable the molecule is. And in fact, carbon dioxide is about 30 kilocalories more stable than what you would expect just looking at its Lewis structure like this. So this does happen, and it does provide more stability to the carbon dioxide molecule. Now, one other thing we could try to imagine here. These are, again, they're sharing pi electrons. And what happened in this structure is that this oxygen literally swiped the electron from the carbon. So now it has two lone pairs of p orbital electrons in a negative charge. This one came down to form the triple bond, so carbon still has an octet. Well, what would happen if we had it like this? Carbon. This swipes both electrons, has a negative charge, and this does not provide any pair of electrons to form a bond, then this would just have a positive charge. And you can have these situations in organic chemistry where carbon does have a positive charge like this because it's lacking an electron. It's called a carbo cation. And we could imagine, OK, if that happens, then maybe instead of this oxygen keeping both electrons, maybe this one will do it, as we saw over here. Then we would have it like this. And these are symmetrical. But this does not happen. Carbon can have a positive charge. You can form carbocations. We'll have more examples of that in future videos. But look what happens when we did this structure. We have one, two, three covalent bonds. 
we started off with four. When you're drawing Lua structures, you never want to have, you do not want to have a decrease in the number of covalent bonds. The purpose of the different canonical forms, again, is to add more stability to the system. But if you've decreased the number of covalent bonds, that's not going to give you extra stability. So this scenario here does not happen because we have decreased the number of covalent bonds. These can happen. You have charge separation, which is not ideal, but it is permissible. And again, each Lewis structure, each canonical form, does have four covalent bonds. So even with a simple molecule like carbon dioxide, you can see there's a lot to think about. Um, this has to be sp hybridized. We saw that to draw the Lewis structure, the carbon, the oxygen could be sp2 hybridized. It's perfectly valid. But if it's sp hybridized, then we can draw these extra Lewis structures, these extra canonical forms, and carbon dioxide then gets that extra resonance stabilization. Okay. We'll try to include some more examples in the future videos, try and work through more and more examples, see if you get comfortable thinking about resonance, because again, it's such an important concept uh, in organic chemistry.